Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. I'm just checking in on you. Sitting in a parking lot. Oh, my God, look at that. Is there anything sadder than an old SUV? Like, how quickly they're out of style. Jesus Christ, this thing has hit some curbs. It has red paint on the side of its front tire. Oh, God, he fucking hit somebody painting a curb. I bet that car's been sitting there for months. Involved in a crime. Today on the Inland Empire, man painting curb hit by ugly, out-of-date SUV. Um, Anyway, anyway, my daughter lost a tooth last night, right? A couple nights ago. So my wife, she forgot to do the tooth fairy thing. So, you know, she had an early day, so she goes, can you do me a favor? Can you do the tooth fairy thing tonight? And I fucking hate doing that. I hate all of this shit. I hate all of these stupid fucking lies you start your, your, your relationship with your kids with, right? I especially hate the tooth fairy thing because <clears throat> I have to, like, fucking sneak into their goddamn room like a fucking predator. So I always tell her, I go, listen, just do me a favor. There's, like, a table out in the hall. I go, just... Put the tooth in a plastic bag out in the hall. Then my daughter's like, well, how can the tooth fairy fly into the fucking window? She doesn't curse, but, you know, how can you fly through the window? It's like, it's going to find. It's just, you know. I'm surprised they still let it, you still, like, are allowed to say tooth fairy. You know, because calling somebody a fairy is, like, considered homophobic. The tooth fairy. You know, to be conscious with the queer community, we're now going to call it the the tooth... Um, the fuck would they call it? What's a synonym for fairy? I'm not into those gnomes and all of that shit. I don't know what you would call it. Well, at least they said fairy. They didn't say the other one. If they called it the other thing, Jesus Christ. Is there any other word like that? Where it's got something else attached at the front so you don't really notice it. You can still call you can call somebody a fairy. You can call them a Mary. Any of the airy words, you can still do that. You know? I think you can still do I mean, you can basically do whatever the fuck you want. It's just whether you like your job or not. Hey, dude, you like your fucking job? Do you like your job? That would be great, though. If the gay community got upset with tooth fairies. And then, like, listening to fucking idiots arguing about it online. Dude, the tooth fairy was around long before the queers. Queer people are actually people. Hello? Like where a fairy isn't? Think much? (laughs) Uh, Rest in peace, O.J. Simpson. I hope God is a forgiving God. (laughs) They couldn't catch him on the field or off. You know, say what you want about his relationships. The guy ran for like 2,003 yards in a 14-game season for the Buffalo Bills, by the way. For the Buffalo Bills. An AFL team that won one AFL championship, has never won a fucking Super Bowl. Ran behind the Hall of Famer Joe DeLamulier. I always never knew how to say his name. And I think uh, Joe Ferguson used to hand him the ball. I don't know who did it at the beginning of his career. That's like one of those fucking old, like, AFL, like, white quarterbacks that retired when he was 34 and then became a state senator. Remember that? They all had fucking jobs. Dude, they all had fucking jobs. Um, anyway. And there goes another one from my childhood. I had a weird relationship with O.J. Simpson. Because a lot of people, like, you know, if you didn't watch sports, you just knew him as a guy that, you know, probably killed two people. (laughs) But if you watched him play football and then you saw him in The Naked Gun and then he also made a great movie about these astronauts. They were going out on some fucking mission 
and they were supposed to find something, and it didn't work out, and it was an embarrassment to the government, so they were just going to say the astronauts got killed. So they, their, their own government went out to kill them. So, of course, O.J. died first because he's the black astronaut, the blasternaut. And then, uh, then the other two, one, one of the white guys got away, probably the better looking of the two. How it, that's how it used to work back then. If you had wavy black or brown hair and the fucking uh, the dimple in your chin, that meant you were going to make it to the end credits. Um, if you're a redheaded male, you weren't in the movie. Maybe you played a cop. All right, everybody keep back. Everybody keep back. Not going to tell you again, lady. Uh, could you just stick to the script? Sorry. Sorry, I just got a little heat stroke out here. It's the 70s. There's no such thing as sunscreen yet. I just saw this cool old guy walking by with a, a walking stick. That's almost as tall as him. Oh, fuck, is he blind? You know, like one foot of difference. There's one foot of difference between a cane and being legally blind. Anyway, <clears throat> he's got a... Uh, He's got a bulldog that he's walking with him. I want one of those so bad. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, Jesus Christ, look at this guy's fucking ride. This guy is ready for the fucking apocalypse. He has two goddamn extra gas things. You know what's funny about this truck? This truck looks like it, you know, it could go off road and destroy, but like it, it doesn't, it never does. It's too pretty. You know what I mean? It's like those hot chicks that go to the gym and they tie off their T-shirt and they just, you know, they have on full makeup. It's like you're not working up a sweat. That truck is the fucking truck version of that fucking lazy whore at the gym. <laughs> all right, you want me to describe it to you? All right, it's all black. And then it has giant black tires, giant black rims with red accents on it that match the red writing that say, what does it say? I can't read it. I'm not cool enough. I don't know what it, it's R-E something I-T-E. It's like written on the side. It's probably just like promoting a fucking real housewife season. This time, these ladies aren't fucking around. I may be stupid, but when I need to be smart, I am. <laughs> you know, dumb shit that they say at the beginning of those fucking Real Housewives stuff? Just because my pussy stinks doesn't mean my ideas do. I'm a Lana. <laughs> <laughs> my toes are crooked, but my heart is straight. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was trying to say that I was honest. All right, let's rework that. Um, my toes are pointing at everyone in the room, but I'm centered. All right, we can go with that. All right, just do it one more time with feeling. My toes are pointing at everyone in the room, but my heart is centered, bitch. Oh, I love the bitch. I love the bitch. You, you liked it? I loved it. I loved it. It really added to it. <laughs> Dude, Sam Ash is going out of business. Sammy! Go down there, get yourself a double pedal for the price of a single. Everything must go. If it doesn't, it ends up in the ocean. I've seen so much shit that I want to buy lately, and I know what that means now. It means I'm sad. There's something going on with me. Because whenever I buy something, like a week later, I'm like, this is not making me happier, and now I have to fucking dust this thing and move it around. And if I ever move again, I have to move it with me. Oh, look at the guy with the fucking Taurus. Not the Taurus, the, uh, the Tesla, backing it in. We, guys, we need to normalize backing into a parking spot. I love all these people that suck at driving that try to, like, fucking give people shit because they back into a, a parking spot. Just pull in. No, back in so you can get the fuck out of there. You know what backing in means? That means you showed up on time. 
You showed up on time to something you didn't want to go to. Isn't that enough? Can't you just let us back into the thing? Um, oh, my God, he uses the frunk. Nobody uses all those fucking electric cars. They talk about the extra trunk in the front and nobody fucking uses them. By the way, I don't think I've ever seen a fucking vehicle get more shit than electric cars. There's always these little battery weighs 8,000 pounds. And blah, 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 blah. Like gas combustion cars aren't well, like who cares how much it weighs? Who gives a fuck what it's doing to the environment? Gas combustion cars, we bankrupted the country getting oil in, in Iraq. I'm sorry, liberating them. I was thinking about that shit today. Just like, I was actually laying in bed, right? I couldn't go to sleep. My son woke me up and he just kept coming into the room. So finally I just went in and I slept in his bed with him. Um, and then he just fucking crawls all over me the entire night. I'm like, dude, get off of me. Get off of me. Go to sleep. He's like, okay, dad. Okay, dad. Then he just starts like, like pushing his, his fucking adorable feet into my back. I'm like, will you stop? Will you stop it? But then part of me's going like someday he's not going to want to do this. So anyway, what the fuck does that have to do with electric cars? Oh yeah. I couldn't go to sleep. I couldn't go to sleep and I just started thinking about 9-11. Like, if I just wish we knew what the fuck they were doing. All the passengers could have beat the fuck out of those people. Nobody would have died. And then the country wouldn't be bankrupt. You know? And all of these politicians wouldn't be fucking insider trading, trading just making sure that they were going to be okay. And fuck everybody else. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I think it's going to turn around. I think they're going to turn around this stupid no-bail law. No bail. Like, uh, who the fuck came up with that and why? And when are you going to come on TV and apologize for it? That is the dumbest shit I think I've ever heard, right? So I got a buddy of mine. He's, like, super conservative. He goes, it's a fucking stupid liberal law. It's like, all right. Okay, yeah, it is. Liberals came up with that, and it's fucking stupid. But why do you only just see that side? Why can't you see the people behind them? Drives me up the fucking wall. Conservatives got rid of everything. Everything from music in schools all the way to nut houses, where is which where we used to put crazy people that would push you onto the fucking train tracks. You had them in nut houses, but conservatives didn't want to fucking pay for anything. See, I can play the same game. Or or was it the people behind the conservatives and the liberals? squeezing every drop of profit out to the point taxes were so high you couldn't afford anything and something had to fucking go. What really needed to go was these pieces of fucking shit robber barons who are now these tech guys. These tech fucking nerds. Stop calling them tech bros. They're tech nerds. And these fucking greedy motherfuckers Dude, someone was telling me people at Amazon work in adult diapers because they're not allowed to take bathroom breaks. I refuse to believe that that's true, but I definitely believe that they don't let them have bathroom breaks. You know, it's just like, what, what is happening to the fucking quality of life? You work 40 fucking hours a week and you still can't make your bills. Something's got to give here. Something's got to give. Um... You know what it's going to take? It's going to take honest politicians that actually stand up to these guys. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Those guys are all socialists and communists and anti-Semites. That's right. Let's get to a career politician who just blames the other side. <clears throat> Depressing. Why can't you all be smart like me? I figured it out without reading a thing. I don't watch TV. There's an old school guy. It's fucking hot as balls. He has on jeans, a t-shirt, and a flannel shirt tucked in in a jean jacket over his fucking shoulder. You know what that guy's going to go do, people? He's going to go to work. Actual work, rather than sitting in a parking lot doing a podcast. <clears throat> so, anyway, um... I'm fucking home for the for the entire rest of the month, but I'm going to be, you know, going around doing some spots wherever the fuck I can cuz I got to make sure uh 
Dude, I'm sorry. That truck is... You know what's really fucking stupid? Is when you have a four-wheel drive truck and then they make the headlights look like the truck is angry. <laughs> I mean, this guy's ready. He's got gas tanks. He's got a fucking ramp. He's got a bunch of... Sh oh, it's called the Reuniter. Reunited and it feels so good. It's actually cool. It's a four. It's a four door Jeep pickup. Um, I actually have some sad family news for you guys. Brace yourselves. Uh, there's rumors that I might have to get rid of my F two fifty. It's just a giant bus sitting in my driveway, and I'm moving it around like a valet. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I owned one. I always wanted to own one. I special ordered it. It had everything that I wanted. You know, I can let it go. I want to be like those people. You know, those fucking guys like like fucking Richard Rawlings on, on uh, Fast and Loud. Guy had like nine cars by the time he was 18. He would get something. Nah, I want something else. Going to get rid of this. I want something else. Going to get this. I fucking hang on to shit. I do feel at some point that that truck with a 6.7 turbo diesel is going to be worth some money someday. Especially because it would have hauled nothing other than a fucking flat top grill once a year over to the Rose Bowl. However, next season, the Michigan Wolverines are going to be playing USC out here at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum, home of the first two and only NFL-AFL championship games that were later renamed like the Dotson. When Dotson became Nissan, the AFL and NFL-AFL championship game was renamed Super Bowl I and Super Bowl II. And I finally understand why they don't count NFL championships, because... The NFL and the AFL, the NFL did not absorb the AFL. They merged. That's how much the AFL was kicking ass. They didn't have to bow down like the ABA. They didn't have to bow down like the fucking, who else? The AAFL. They didn't fold. They did not fold. Um... I do like how the NFL is so big now that they just don't, they, they won't absorb anything. After, after the fucking AFL, they had the World Football League. Oh my God, I love this guy that just pulled up. He's got a fucking track suit on. He's about 70 years old. Full head of silver fox hair. A little, little thinning in the back. He's got the collar. I'm sorry, it's a vest. Even better. It's a solid black vest. With fucking striped button-down shirt. He's getting out and I got my window open, so I got to stop talking here. So anyway, honey, I'm really looking forward to you getting back. Oh, my God, that's amazing. And the vest, I'm sorry, it's like an olive green. And it has like, you know that mattress padding? That's fucking amazing. I love old people that are trying to stay warm even when it's hot out, you know? They're, they're, they're like, they're the most adorable people. And I love fucking old people. I love shooting the shit with them. I like a grouchy old person and then winning them over. Do you eat in diners by yourself like I do? Do you try to chat up the locals? <laughs> I love them when they have those dark fucking glasses like Father Guido, Guido Sarducci, you know? They're just sitting over in the corner. Every once in a while, though, you meet a truly happy, spirited old guy, and you're just like, that's that guy fucking gets it. He gets it. Or she, my grandmother on my mother's side was like that. She fucking got it. Like, I remember seeing her when she was in her 90s, was volunteering at a hospital. Her energy was crazy. She was smiling. She was like, she had a pep in her step. I didn't understand it when I was younger, but now, now I get it. It was like she was like, life is meant to be lived. All right? You fucking take that olive mattress padded goddamn vest out of the closet. You put that on. He's got his hair combed. This guy's going out there. Hey, did you see this fucking... I'm back on Instagram, people. I, I fucking I had a relapse, you know? I'm going to have to have another intervention. Last night I was like death scrolling and I, I, I'm, I'm off it. I'm off it. I don't need it. I'm high on life. 
Um, so I fucking uh, was watching this thing, and this guy was like 99, and his wife was 97. And he found these letters from when she had an affair in the 1940s, and he fucking divorced her. I mean, that's one of the strongest fucking moves I've ever seen in my life. I mean, he can't even be like, all right, it was like 80 years ago. You fuck, what am I going to do, walk away and die alone? He's like, yeah, I am. Take a walk, you retroactive fucking whore. (laughs) Oh, shit. If I was him, I would have just been like, you fucking asshole. All right, I get it. I was a dick when I was younger. Maybe you wanted somebody that fucking listened to you. I I don't, I honestly, if it was that far away, I wouldn't have given a fuck. And I would have been like, all right, well, you just got to know this. Every Saturday, I'm bringing me and my old dick to a massage parlor. And you're not asking any questions for the rest of my life. Cool? All right. And you know what? A pie once a month would be all right. How about that? Is that all right? You know what's funny about that? Like, a fucking woman would ask for a yellow diamond. I'm a guy. Can I get fucking rubbed and tug once a week? (laughs) And get 12 pies a year? Uh, I mean, you can't get mad at somebody you're not even fucking anymore, can you? But it's got to be mind-blowing. Somebody said in the comments, he goes, he didn't divorce her because she fucking fucked around on him. It's because she kept the letters. And that is the thing. That's is what I would haunt my fucking 99-year-old mind. I would be like, did she, like, actually love this guy and not me? But, like, I, I provided, I gave her something else. I gave her stability. Was this other guy, like, a bum? I'll tell you, one of the hardest movies to watch is uh, Casino. And watching De Niro keep taking, like, I, there's not a lot of movies like that. Where there's, like, a fucking guy, he's just with some chick for whatever reason. He loves her. He feels she's out of his league. He doesn't have any fucking self-esteem and just stays there. I mean, there's no, you're not honest with yourself as a man if you don't watch Casino and don't see a little bit of yourself in Robert De Niro. We've all been that fucking guy. You just, I'm not literally she cheats on you with some fucking James Wood degenerate. I don't mean that, but like, we've all, you know, you've been, you've been weak. You've made concessions. You look the other way and it took you years to get out of something. And then you just look back on it going like, I knew, I fucking knew. I knew from the first fucking thing, but you, you, everybody's got to have that Sharon Stone relationship before you get married. Unless you're just one of those people who just fucking, you know, you're first at bat in the league, you hit a dinger. You know, we met, you know, that's, I feel like that's some old school shit. I met her in high school and I did, it was love at first sight. It wasn't love at first sight. It was love without social media. There was no whores to look at. They weren't allowed to dress hoary. You lived in this little fucking log cabin, cabin in the middle of nowhere. Wasn't it was, it was the only vagina. Unless you were going bestiality within your fucking, there wasn't even an area code or a zip code. It was an arranged marriage through logistics. Um, anyway, shout out to that guy, though, man. You got to fuck it. I, like, the level that I respect that guy, that at 99, he's like, no, 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 I don't give a fuck. I will die alone before I die with a woman that fucked some guy in 1946. <laughs> There's not a lot of guys that can say that. <clears throat> anyway, if I was her, my argument would be like, I fucked this guy so long ago, he wrote me letters. I mean, Jesus Christ. He didn't even have a typewriter. Um, anyway. Oh, nice cool breeze. Nice cool breeze coming in off the ocean. Coming in off the water, Santa Monica, off the water. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I haven't been able to fly all fucking week. It's annoying the shit out of me. I'm going to do it tomorrow. 
I'm gonna fucking fly my ass somewhere. Um, I'm not getting rid of that F-250. I'm not. Get, I'm gonna find some place I can fucking put it. I'll park that fucking thing out in the goddamn street before I get rid of it. You understand me? Well, don't park it in front of the house. Goddamn rules. You know what would be you know what would be amazing is if is if like now you found out like what would you do right now if you fucking found out your wife or your girlfriend was cheating on you because you found love letters in fucking 2024. What do you do with that? I would be like, what country does this person live in that they don't have they don't have fucking email? There must have been a lot of pressure back in the day writing a love letter. Because you can't erase. Ah, why did I say titties? Fuck. Can I make it into something else? <laughs> what is tit- titular? Titular. I don't know what that fucking word means. Um, sorry, I was just watching this guy fucking pulling in like 90 miles an hour. What does that word mean? A t- t- titular? I don't even know how to say it. That meant it was going to be like softcore porn, I think, back in the day. It was funny because it sounded like titties, but it also sort of sounded like it described that, that first little tingle in your dick when you, when, when you start getting excited. You know, it's like that first little breeze before a storm comes. Bill, are you comparing your dick to a fucking nor'easter? I am. All right, I grew up in Massachusetts. Sure, in Buffalo, they compare a hard-on to lake effect snow. I mean, it's just, it always goes back to weather with guys, doesn't it? Um, anyway, you found love letters in 2020 fucking four. You got, what are you, dating an actor? You cheating on me with an actor? I can tell you right now, he's not going to, he's not making any money in the business if he's still writing letters. What's he doing, Shakespeare in the park? Did he fuck you up against the tree? Um... This relationship is over. Um, anyways. It's kind of ironic when you're waiting to go to the fucking gym and you're looking at a McDonald's at the same time. Decision time. When you're looking at the gym and you're looking at McDonald's, that's like when you're a young person and it's like, should I go with this woman that I actually have feelings for or should I let this whore fuck my brains out? Why am I talking about this shit today? I, I, have, I have no idea what, why it's all coming to this. I usually don't talk about that type of stuff in the bedroom. The stuff that goes on in the bedroom, I don't talk about it because I was raised Catholic and I still feel like it, it's, you know, there's something lowbrow about it. And then I also feel that it's easy laughs. You know, I came up in the fucking 90s in this goddamn business. Back when you fired your manager, right now, you typed a letter. So you knew that that way they knew it was serious. Um, but uh, I first started headlining in the fucking ni- late 90s. And I always knew when the feature rack was wrapping up. If they were going into their, their, their sex material, because even they. Even they had nothing in their act that could follow it. You ever been fucking? The whole crowd. No joke. Ah, would just fucking lose their mind. On the most common thing that there is in the world. Other than breathing is people having sex. That's why there's fucking eight billion of us. And everybody loses their minds like they're fucking talking about you know, some inside shit. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this right fucking now. And you don't have to listen to it. You don't have to receive it. All I want you to do is hear it. You don't got to listen. Just hear. All right? There's a difference now. Um, listening means you're taking it in and you're actually going to act on what I say. Hearing me is just you're, you're, you're nodding politely when you're thinking about what you're going to order for dessert. Um, I literally forgot what I was going to say. Went that whole fucking run. What was I just talking about? I was talking about not talking about sex, 90s, and da 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 People finishing with their fucking sex jokes. 
Uh, there was nothing I enjoyed better than watching some guy doing his stupid going to the proctologist fucking chunk or, uh, you know, fucking a girl with an ass so big and it, it blah, 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 blah. I loved nothing more than going up on stage once I learned how to do it. Going up on stage, totally. I used to try to match the energy. Like they would end this. And the doctor's got his fucking finger up my ass. Like way up there. And then I would come on stage. Hey, how are you guys doing? There was nowhere to go. There was nowhere to go. Eyebrows up, screaming at full volume. And I still had 44 minutes to go. So somebody along the way gave me the advice to do the exact opposite energy. Go up there and settle them fucking down. And actually, you know, it's almost like the first round. Feel them out, maybe lose the round. And then just make them gradually just forget that fucking hack. And then, and then you move on from there. And that's the way it was done. I used to love doing that because, you know, those fucking competitive hacks, they would fucking, they would stand, you'd see them, they would stand in the back they get a drink and they'd be drinking, you know, from the straw. They'd be in the back with a long glass with the straw. And they'd have their head down, like looking up, like almost like their eyebrows, if they were bushy, would be blocking part of their vision. Doing that shit. Acting like they weren't looking at you, but they were. They had their head down because they think you're far enough away that you, you thought they were looking at what they were drinking. But I know what you're doing. You're looking at me. You're looking at me to see if I can follow this shit. And I'm going to show you not only am I going to follow it, I'm going to do it effortlessly. Right? And then you're going to go even harder the next show, and I'm going to do it again. And somewhere after the first show Friday, you're going to start coming around and asking me for advice in the business. I used to call that break in the middle. Break in the feature act like a fucking horse. It would take you till Friday first show. Wednesday night, one Thursday, and then Friday. Sometimes till Saturday if they were stubborn. And he didn't say shit to him. All you would say, hey, you know, great set. They were dick, you'd just say good set. And he could see the good. Good would hurt him. So a lot of psychology went back then. Now you just go on Facebook and be like, you can't believe what this guy did to me. I had to go on after his sex jokes. Bunch of fucking whining pussies. All right, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy the music. Picked out by the always... Wonderful, Andrew Themelis. Then we have a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. I'm going to the gym. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday morning podcast for Monday, April 11th. April 11th, 2016. What's going on? How are you? It's uh, it's Sunday night. It's a Sunday evening. I'm in the house all by myself. Uh, the lovely Nia had some business meeting or some shit she had to go to. Um, it's show business. I know what you're saying. You guys all live in the normal world. You're thinking like, wait, my wife says she's got a business meeting on a Sunday night at fucking yeah, surpassed a certain hour. That means she's out there banging somebody else. Fucking ball banging cop there. I know that's what you're thinking, but uh, I'm in show business, so it's totally normal for them to go out that way. What the fuck happened to the hi-hat over here? I told you I got my little fucking practice set up there. What the fuck is... Maybe Cleo was playing it when I wasn't here. Anyways. Anyways. Um, yeah, so she's out, so I'm going to try to knock this out because uh, I got to be at work on Monday for something. For some reason, I uh, still can't say whether what it is or what's going on. Hopefully uh, soon. Yeah, you know what it is. You know what it is. Maybe you don't know what it is. Maybe you don't listen every week, but you know what it is. So I got to be at work on Monday. And, uh, oh, Billy fucking uh, clean living. Ever since I got back from Canada. Oh, Canada. You bunch of freezing cunts. I got <laughs> I just got back from there. And uh, I kind of realized that when I go on the road with the fellas, we act like we're on some sort of bachelor party. I don't know what it is. Minus the fucking who is everything else. Uh, we basically, uh, you know, we booze and we smoke cigars and that thing. And it's just, you know, it takes a lot out of me. And I got a bunch of shit I got to do. So I kind of need to be clear headed 
As opposed to the usual, you know, usually when I got nothing going on in my life, I mean, I can fucking, you know, I can have a few, right? I can wake up the next morning like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, we'll get some fucking eggs or something, right? I can be in that mindset, but uh, as of right now, I can't. So um, I have not done anything. I haven't done shit. I haven't fucking, haven't drank. I haven't smoked. Uh, I'm eating pretty good. Uh, I'm even laying off the internet porn. I mean, it's just fucking over. I actually got this Time magazine that was about internet porn and how how it's like fucking people up, you know, especially like kids, you know, when they first like just the shit. The sh- who's kidding who? The shit you can see on the fucking internet. <clears throat> I can't believe nobody stepped in. I'm not saying somebody should step in, but um, you know, I got to tell you, if 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 they knew what the fuck the internet was gonna be when it was. F- Whenever Al Gore was inventing it back in the 80s. <laughs> um, I never said that. I said that I was at, I was involved in the email chain, whatever the fuck he said. That fucking guy. Remember when his campaign was over? Remember when he was dancing around and all sweaty and all that shit? He just looked like he was so fucking relieved that it was over. Um, what a thing to go through running for president. I just saw a clip of Hillary Clinton. I have not been paying attention at all, but Jesus Christ, what the fuck happened to her? She looks like Earl fucking Weaver. She looks like Earl Weaver. She was doing something, right? She was standing in some black church, right? Baptist church, I'm going to assume, you know? I don't think it was a Jewish uh, synagogue there, whatever the fuck they could, temple. She was in this green suit. She's just like yelling, ah, all the shit she was going to do. That's the only time a politician goes near the black community is when they're running. They they fucking, they swing by the church. They make a whole bunch of promises and then they get in the fucking limo and they go, let's get the fuck out of here, right? Fuck out of Dodge. Then they go over, they do a town meeting, talk to all the lunch pail Louis, right? Then if if there's even those people left in this country, if you fucking make anything, they get over there and they say, roll up their sleeves. That's when, you know, they're talking to the working man. They take off their sport coat and they roll up their sleeves. You know, like they're going to build something rather than just go out there and say the exact same bullshit they just said in the Baptist church with more of a fucking uh, lunch pail swing to it, right? And the whole fucking thing is just gross. I don't know how anybody sits there and watch that shit. But um, the latest thing that I've become fascinated with is I completely leave whatever the fuck I was just talking about. I'll come back to it, the clean living thing. Who wants to listen about clean living? It's the most boring shit ever. You know? Anyways, um, I've become fascinated with how super rich people avoid paying taxes. It's fucking fascinating. It's one of those things, you know, it's it's like you got to respect it on a certain level. It's the, the brilliance of it. And then there's a certain level of balls that that takes because you're fucking with your freedom. Anytime you're fucking with taxes, you know what I mean? Fucking with the government. Anytime you, you, you're doing that, I mean, you know, what is that? I don't know what the fuck. Is that a federal thing? I guess if you're not paying your federal income tax, yeah, Bill, that would probably be a federal crime. <laughs> I don't know. I always say you got to cross state borders. Do you have to like not pay taxes and then leave your state before it becomes federal? I don't know. I don't know these things. But anyways, um, just the balls that it takes and the, uh, I don't know. I don't like people physically hurting other people, that type of crime. But when there's something like robbing banks or tax evasion or even a good old-fashioned fucking scam, if there's like a like an amazing level of thought behind it. On some level, you got to respect it, I think. You know what I mean? Like, I remember a long time ago, there was some fucking guy, he figured out how to rob parking meters. And they were, allegedly, it was impossible to do. So this guy figured out how to fucking do it. It's amazing. And he did this shit. This is back in like the 80s or some shit. This guy figured out how to do it. So it was way, way, way easier to not have everybody breathing down your fucking throat. You know, people be having eggs watching you fucking robbing a parking meter. They didn't have a fucking smartphone on them. They'd just be sitting there going, look at this fucking guy. guy just Is that guy robbing a parking meter? 
Holy shit! The fucking guy that got his fucking the parking. Did you see that? Anybody see that? That was it. That's all that fucking happened. Rather than some douche sitting there filming you and you're arrested before you even get home. Right? And then the fucking local newscasters, they always got to do some sort of fucking bad pun. You know what I mean? I'll tell you, this guy's life, his freedom is now going to change. You know how they do that? Somehow they get away with that in like fucking newspapers. Like they can have the biggest fucking puns ever and everybody thinks it's great. You know? I, I don't know. I, I, I can't even think of one right now, man. but uh, whatever. You know, you sit at home and you think about it. You sit at your fucking cubicle instead of doing your goddamn work. You think of one. So anyways, this fucking guy figured out how to do this shit. Um, and, of course, the parking meter guards were beside themselves. You know what I mean? It was like one of those sci-fi movies or like the Titanic movie. Like, eh, not even God can sink it. That's what they were like. Not even God could get the fucking quarters out of this meter. This meter, right? That's They were talking all kinds of shit. So this fucking guy figured out how to do it. And you're thinking like, all right, whatever, man. You do, well, What the fuck are you going to do with that? Well, dude, there's fucking meters all over the city. So this guy, anytime he wanted a drink, if he wanted a fucking sandwich, dude, he, this guy, he had it perfect. It was like his own ATM machine before ATM machines. He'd just walk up, bing, bang, boom. He had a sack of fucking quarters. You go down to the bank. You go, hey, can I get one of the rolly fucking things there? Right? Yeah, sure. They don't give a shit. Nobody gave a fuck back then. Nobody was paying attention. They were trying to pay attention, but not not to that type of shit. So this guy would roll the fucking quarters. You know? Rolls enough quarters. Next thing you know, he gets himself out. of How the fuck would you get all those quarters down to a car dealership? I have no fucking idea. Although I talked to some drug dealers about how they fucking... Um, or a guy who knew drug dealers, let's be honest here, Bill. Let's not act like that news guy saying that you were in the war and then you were in a chopper or some shit next to the chopper and you didn't really fucking see it. Okay, you took a fucking helicopter tour one time. You weren't even in Iraq. Whatever the fuck he said, I don't pay attention to shit. So anyways, I was talking to this guy and basically how back in the day when drug dealers were still driving around in flashy cars because from what I heard nowadays, they, they don't even want to attract that level of attention. Um, how it used to be was anything, any cash deal that was over 10 grand grand had to be fucking reported. So what these drug dealers would do was they would go out and they buy a car worth nine grand for cash. And then they drive it around for like a fucking week. And then they trade it in for a car worth 16 grand, maybe get seven for theirs. And then they throw another fucking nine at the other car. Now they got a $16,000 car. You drive around for a little bit. You fucking trade it in on a $23,000 car. They give you fifth, whatever, and so on and so forth. Until you trade your way all the way up to whatever fucking car you wanted. Um, and just, I don't I just look at that shit. It's like, I mean, that's not the, the deepest thing, but that's the way my brain would work, I'd be like, well, I guess I got to drive a piece of shit then. What's the point of dealing drugs? <laughs> right? Or I'd just say, fuck it. I'm buying a Ferrari and I'm going to drive it until they catch me fucking three weeks later. Um, by the way, the Ferrari I like is the Ferrari California. That's the old man one. The fucking GT, the Grand Touring one, right? I don't need to ride around in some Batmobile. Just give me one that's shaped like a fucking Jaguar. From back in the day, you know? Or maybe a Toyota Supra. <laughs> Remember those fucking things from the 80s? I remember this guy loaned me his while he used my truck to move. And I ran and I beat the shit out of his car and he beat the fuck out of my truck. And we both got our cars back and he's smelling rubber. And I'm seeing all kinds of scratches all over my truck. And we just, that's eh, kind of a fair deal, right? And then we both got arrested for drinking and driving months later. But that's a completely different story. I know. I'm all over the map. I'm doing this late night, and I don't want to be doing it right now, but I got shit to do in the morning. So anyways, this fucking guy, you know, if he had half a fucking brain, what you do is you keep your day job, right? You keep your fucking day job, and then, you know, for anything miscellaneous, you just go to the parking meters, right? And what you do is you start storing up on the quarters, then every once in a while, right, you just start you start washing the money with your fucking cat. I don't know what you do. You fucking, uh, you go into stores and stuff. You, you, who gives a fuck, right? You just use it to get yourself a better TV. But what does this dope do? He gets fucking greedy. 
I don't even remember how the fucking story goes. All I know is he just started hitting every fucking goddamn parking meter around. The next thing you know, he's sitting on like a fucking $2 million in quarters, and he ended up getting busted. But there was a part of it. I liked the guy, you know? So anyways, this gets me to the super rich on how, you know, all of that shit about the Panama Papers and all that type of stuff. I was talking to another friend of mine who's a fucking lawyer, and I was like, how does that work? Like, how do you get your money out of the country? And then once it's out of the country, how do you make sure nobody steals it? Like what happened to Johnny Depp's character in Blow. And then once you have it out of the country, how do you get it back in without just getting taxed all over again or busted? And he said, basically, this is it. And he broke the whole fucking thing down. All right. Or as far as I know, he broke an aspect of it down. I know all you guys are sitting there right now going, oh, Jesus, he's going to try to explain. I am. I'm going to try to explain some shit that was just explained to me, and I don't really know what the fuck I'm talking about. So let's get rid of one myth right out of the gate. I remember a long time ago, a friend of mine had a fucking landscaping business, and he already had a truck, and he went out and he bought this giant fucking, you know, one of those things with the dual wheels on the back and this fucking giant bed. Look, you put cattle in it, right? And I was like, holy fuck, man, how much does that thing cost? And, you know, it's like the 80s. It cost like 25 grand, which was a lot of fucking money back then, right, um, for a truck, you know? It's like 10 grand more than you pay. 25, 30 grand or some shit, right? I was like, holy shit, man, you can afford that? And he was like, yeah, it's a write-off. That's what a lot of dopes say. And they, they, it is a write-off. But what they think is is that they can write $30,000 off of their taxes, which you you can't. What you can do is you can write off. It's a write off as far as that thirty grand that you just spent on that truck is untaxable. All right, it's sitting in whatever you made that money. You made thirty grand. If it's just sitting there and you don't put it back into play as far as reinvesting into your business, the government will tax you at the end of the year. You know, on that thirty grand. And let's say you're in like a fucking ah uh, whatever. 20% tax bracket that you'd, you'd have to give the government fucking six grand, right? That's it. So people, morons think, oh, I get to write 30, in the end of the year, if I owed 40 grand in taxes and I bought a $30,000 truck, I get to take $30,000 off of my taxes. You wouldn't, you'd just be able to knock off six grand, right? And you're not even knocking it off. You're just not getting taxed on that. Does that make sense? Probably doesn't because I explained it. So anyways, when you have your own business, what you're trying to do is you're trying to come up with as many fucking write-offs as you possibly can. Many expenses, everything you possibly can to lower your, your basic, your, your uh, whatever, your income as far as what is going to be taxable. So say you made fucking 100 grand, all right? You grossed 100 grand. The net is what you're left with after your expenses. You try to fucking come up with as many goddamn expenses as you can to get that hundred grand as far down as zero as possible. Ideally, you wouldn't want to pay any fucking taxes as far as these people look. But the bottom line is you can only do it so much. And if you write off too much, the IRS is going to show up and be like, what's this fucking, you know, 60 grand for fucking cheeseburgers, blah, blah, blah. You tried to write off and you're going to get busted. All right. So what these fucking super rich people do is the first thing they do is they get the fucking money out of the out of the out of the country. Because the IRS's jurisdiction doesn't go beyond the borders. So what they do is they just create a company that doesn't exist. It's just, it's just on paper, right? So say you make $100 million, right? What you do is you go to a country that doesn't give a shit about America and, and you, let you use it as a tax shelter. You just come up with some incorporated thing. Like who gives a fuck, Inc., right? And then you just have that company bill your company, a consulting fee for a hundred million dollars or whatever the, whatever of, of the hundred million, 30, 40, 50, whatever you don't want to pay taxes on, whatever you, whatever. And then you write a check to that company that doesn't exist. That's really you. And then you send it out. So now it's out of the fucking country. And then what they do is they open up like 10 other of these fucking shell companies and they have those other companies build the first company. And then the third one builds the second one, the fourth one, and it's just gone. The money's fucking gone. Now, the IRS can come at you and be like, what the fuck did you pay somebody $100 million f- consulting fee? And then you're telling me 
You paid somebody a hundred million dollars as a consulting fee, and then you just look at them and go, "Yes." <laughs> And evidently, there's nothing they can fucking do about it. So then I was like, I go, all right. So now it's out of the country, and then this, it's in this other country. How the fuck do you protect it? And they and he goes, well, you, those countries where these tax shelters are, they're in on the scam. So you just kick them ten percent of the hundred million. You give them ten. Here's fucking whatever you can negotiate. We'll just make it easy. Here's ten million bucks. So I, you know. I'll give you 10 million rather than giving the government fucking 50, 55, 60 million at 100 million. I'm still fucking up 45 million. All right. So then I was like, all right. So now how do you get the money back? Because if, you know, you bring the money back, you stick it to the bank. They're going to consider that earned income. Like, where the fuck did you get it? And this guy was like, they they bring it back into the country in the form of a loan. Loans aren't taxable, right? Like if you get a fucking loan because you're already paying interest on it and everything, they don't tax you. So they just bring it back in the form of a loan, whatever the fuck you want to do. I want to buy a $10 million house. You have this shell company that's 10 times removed from the one that you paid from the consulting fee, right? And they can't follow the paper trail because it's in a different country, right? You just bring it back into the country in the form of a loan. um, And then you go buy a fucking house. And I guess, I don't know, you pretend to make payments or the loan is forgiven by this shell company that's still you. I I know I just glossed over that. And if anybody has more information on it, I find it absolutely fascinating. There's all, there's other ones. They just pretend that that's their main business, um, that shell company. So they just act like it's doing the, I don't know. That that's That's as far as I can remember that what he told me. And I found that shit absolutely fucking fascinating because at the end of the fucking day as far as what they're doing i know they're fucking over you and me because you know the school systems go down the shitter because they don't have enough money there's a lot of potholes there's all kinds of stuff you can't take care of homeless people you can't build another gleaming structure for a fucking sports team whatever the fuck it is um at the end of the day as fucked up as that is these people who are criminals they're stealing from other criminals. As far as my uh, conspiracy theory goes, the IRS is just a bunch of fucking crooks anyway. So, I mean, they it's kind of fascinating watching these two giant, powerful entities fuck with each other. You know, meanwhile, you know, I'm in the crosshairs, you're in the crosshairs, and we're all paying Elvis taxes. <laughs> And there goes Hillary Clinton screaming in some Baptist church. Is she talking about that shit? Of course she isn't. Because when you bring the fucking money back in, you just don't bring it in and go out and buy yourself your fucking Ferrari California. What you do is, I mean, you do do that. But what else, what you also do is you walk around with a nice wad of cash and you go, oh, hey, chief of police. Oh, look at that birdie over there. And as he looks over, you stuff a fucking wad of cash in his pocket, you know. And then, oh, oh, is it an election year? Yeah, let me get, uh, I'll take $2 million on Trump. Give me two point five on Hillary and uh, fuck it. Give me five hundred grand on Bernie Sanders. What do you mean he's not taking any money from guys like me? Oh, is that right? Oh, uh, well, you know, whatever. He won't get in. And if he does, uh, you know, I'll give $3 million to, uh, you know, silence him. That's what the fuck they do. And that's, and that's how they, they, you know. I don't, I'm convinced of that. I'm convinced as far as like stand-up comedy goes, you know why they're always giving us shit? It's because uh, we, if, if stand-up comedians just organized, okay, and we donated to the campaigns of people running for, to the Democratic and the Republican parties, right? And then we bought a little ad time on CNN on, and on Fox News and all these major networks. If we did that, you'd never see another comedian getting in trouble for doing a fucking... Caitlyn Jenner joke. <laughs> Anyways, if anybody has any more information on that, or they can talk about it. I, I, I don't like if it's really dry. I just like, um, I'm fascinated with people that do shit like that. And then they go to bed knowing what the fuck they're doing. And they got to be thinking at some point, like the wolf's got to be coming to the door at some point. Hang on one second. I got to answer this. All right, so I'm back. Of course, I completely forget what the fuck I, where I, I ended off. Um, but what I really learned when I was, you know, listening to this lawyer telling me all this shit, um, 
Oh, I know I say in the balls that that takes to go to bed at night, knowing at any point, like, all of a sudden the fucking feds are going to kick in your fucking door. But I think that these guys are, like, the smarter ones. And when you watch, like, American Greed, what I noticed when I watched them, all of their fuckery was within the borders of the United States, which you just, I mean, if you, I guess if you're too dumb to know, you don't realize you're not going to get away with it forever. But, like, once I, um, after talking to this guy, it just seems like anybody who just tries to have their entire illegal entity within the borders of one country is uh, you're just on borrowed time. So I think when you watch American Greed, what you're really seeing is is the hacks of, uh, you know, you always see these fucking idiots. They buy a house, they get all these fucking cars, and they have some strippers come over. Oh, my fucking laptop. Oh, that was a laptop hitting hardwood floors. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Come around. You're all right. Hang in there. Help us on the way. Fuck. Oh, you fucking motherfucker. Steve Jobs is laughing somewhere right now. He's laughing at me because I got to give him money, and he also knows there's going to be another little kid's got to put it together. All right. It's saved. It's saved. Um, So anyways, uh, let's read a little bit of fucking ad shit here before my screen goes dark. Hang on a second. I find that shit. I find it. Um, I find all that stuff fucking amazing. It's really, really interesting. If you just remove yourself from it, the humanity of it or whatever, uh, and all the people that it's affecting and kids not getting better school books and shit. If you just look at the fucking game that's going on, it's really fucking interesting. All right. Oh, shit. All right. How many more of these fucking things do I have? All right. We're going two and two then. All right. You guys you already listened to fucking two of these. Let's get back to the podcast, shall we? All right. Um, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I got to bring it up. My Boston Bruins, unfortunately, um, after a big, big win over the Detroit Red Wings, uh, got beat down by Ottawa 6-1, to one, and uh, we're out of it. You know what's funny? We beat Detroit the game before. And then because we lost, Detroit got in. And do you know there was actually a certain amount of fucking Red Wing fans that were actually talking shit? The smart ones were going, hey, thanks for losing. And then the other ones were like, ah, fucking 26 years in a, in a row. We've been in the playoffs. Yeah, it's impressive. But this year you backed in like a bitch. You went in ass first. I don't know what you fuck. I mean, because a team that you couldn't even beat when it count two days before you know, who fucking manhandled you. I don't know what you're excited about, you know? You like the fat chick who got, you know, fucking ass to the prom. You know, yeah, you're all you just you just wanted to be there. Who's getting who? You're there for the fucking buffet, and then you're going home crying. That's what I'm predicting for Detroit. Your makeup's gonna be running by game three of the first series. I'm fucking with you. I, I have no hate for anybody that's in the playoffs this year. Uh I think I'm going to, uh, and I've always liked Detroit, because um, when I was growing up, they never won shit. The big thing is they hadn't won it since 1955 with Gordy Howe, and um, they were in the middle of a 40-year drought um, before they got a team around Iserman, and uh, man, those were great times watching hockey. That fucking avalanche, Red Wings fucking rivalry. That was the best. It was the first time when I lived in L.A., and the games came on at 5, and I, I totally got back into hockey. You know, it was original six. Oh, it was the best. I'm sorry. Fucking yawning here. So um, so this year, I think in the East, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to root, root for two fucking teams this year in the East and the West. Uh, I'm rooting for the Capitals to push through to get to the finals. And uh, as much as I like the Kings and the Blackhawks, just to switch it up, I'd love to see the Dallas Stars or uh, the St. Louis Blues, you know, somebody different, you know. St. Louis Blues, who's kidding? Their fans have been waiting for fucking ever. They have been in the league. They're part of the Expansion Six that came in 1967, all right? The NHL was a six-team league um, before that, right after the Depression. There was a lot of people, I didn't realize this either. There was a, there was a bunch of other teams, not a bunch, but there was like at least four other fucking teams or something. That all folded after the the, uh, the Depression. And the six that survived then became known as the original six. Um, so in 1967, six teams came in. Can you name them, Bill? 
off the top of my head, let's see. There was the Flyers, the Penguins, the North Stars. Oh, Jesus. The California Golden Seals. Oh, man, I used to know this off the top of my head. Wait, 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 wait. Capitals didn't come in until the early 70s. Fuck me. St. Louis Blues. Jesus Christ, I just brought them up. One more. One more. Was it a Seattle team? Cleveland Barons. That's what the fucking Golden Seals became, didn't they? Oh, the fucking L.A. Kings. Yeah, and the L.A. Kings. Way the fuck out there. And that was funny when for the Golden Seals, like, folded or went to Cleveland. They went to Cleveland just like the dreams of all the sports fans there. They, they, they just fucking died a slow, miserable death. And, um, like, that franchise just died out. Nobody bought it and went nowhere. It just went to Cleveland and fucking died. So for the longest time... The only game in town out fucking west was the Kings. Every fucking road trip they had was like at least a three, four hour fucking flight. Denver didn't have a team. Vancouver didn't have a team. Edmonton, Calgary, they had nothing. They were just out there by themselves, you know, basically fucking whatever actresses couldn't bang a Los Angeles Dodger or an L.A. Ram. That's basically they got sloppy thirds. That's what was going on. So anyways, yeah, we lost. So uh, congratulations to the Flyers and the fucking Red Wings. There was two spots left and t- three teams vying for it. And uh, we didn't get in. And like clockwork, the day after we don't get in, what Boston sports writer who doesn't watch hockey do you think piled on immediately? And as always, calls for the wrong head to be chopped off. Good old... Dan Shaughnessy, the noodle-headed cunt himself, who doesn't watch hockey, doesn't like hockey, chimes in. Something's got to be done. It's time. Based on what, Dan? All the hockey you never fucking watch? Um, Claude Julian, this was actually one of his finest coaching performances of the year. I mean, of his career. They traded the entire fucking team away. Basically, they, they it was what they got rid of over the last few years. Tyler Sagan, um, Johnny Boychuk, Dougie fucking fresh there, fucking uh, Milan Lucic. It was just, I was like, we got nothing. We got nothing left. I now look at Marshawn. We got Berge. We still had Chara. Chara's older now. But basically, who's kidding who? Anybody who fucking watches hockey looked at the Bruins. It was like, you know what? This is a rebuilding year. And all the way up to like mid-March, Claude Julian had this, this rebuilding year team was a third seed. Everybody was bunched together. We hit a bad patch, you know, went out west. Tough fucking run. We lost some games. The next thing you know, we were fighting for the playoff lives, as they say, and we didn't win. I mean, I mean, I don't know. If you get, I would get, if anybody's head's going to get chopped off, you chop the head off whoever made all those fucking trades but, you know, the bottom line is the guy who made the first half of those already got his head chopped off. And then you got, was it Mike O'Connell? You got to give this guy a chance. Right? You can't just go one and done. How fucked up would that be? They just gave Claude Julian a fucking watch for having the most, vic- the most wins ever of any Bruins coach. He got us our first fucking Stanley Cup in like, what was it, almost 40 years. And then what? A couple years later, he doesn't know how to coach hockey anymore? Why is it time, Dan Shaughnessy? Why is it time? Because it's too early in the baseball season. You got nothing to write about. This guy's forever calling for somebody's head. You know what, Dan? You know what I think it's time for you to do? It's time for you to stop writing about hockey or maybe watching maybe fucking five games in a goddamn season. Unfucking believe that guy. I swear to God, at the end of the day, I think he's from New York City. The way he just tries to pull apart fucking teams, it's unbelievable. You know what I mean? He's like somebody, well, some mob guy's gumar that they end up having to whack because she can't keep her fucking mouth shut. Oh, Jesus, Bill, go easy on the guy. He's just trying to sell some fucking papers. Um, I don't really hate Dan Shaughnessy. I don't know the guy, but I can tell you right now, uh, he's one of the few people that looks less athletic than me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, 
Anywho, as I as I was talking about earlier, um, I've been doing the whole fucking clean living thing since I got back from uh, yet another lost bachelor party weekend slash stand up dates run with uh, with my buddies there, um, Furzy and Bartnick, and uh, so this whole week, no booze, no porn. No cigars, nothing. I got the cigar thing. I got that thing on on fucking lockdown. Um, I don't have them in my house. I think about doing. I don't think about doing it as much. And I only had one cigar in March, and I'm going to try to just have one this month. Although, um, I'm, you know, look, I'm thinking about only having one, and then I'm also thinking about having a fucking cigar night over here. I might do that because I have like fucking. I don't know, about 10 cigar friends. And unless you smoke cigars, you don't know what that means. But it's just people that call, hey, I'm going to smoke. You want to come by, right? So all of a sudden, I have 10 opportunities a month. People call me, come on, man, come by and smoke, come by and smoke. And next thing you know, you're smoking like seven, eight, nine, ten of them. So I'm going to invite all of them over to my house the same fucking night. And I'll smoke one cigar with all 10 of them rather than smoking one each with 10 individuals. How does that math work, right? Then I'll create a shell company. Um, So anyways, so I bought this Time magazine on watching internet porn and how it's fucking up kids. Like they're, you know, the amount of shit that they see before they even get their first fucking hand job. It turns them into like these fucking sociopaths. And I got to admit, reading some of the articles, like I could relate to a lot of the shit that was going on. So I'm I'm really just going to fucking, going to try to stop that cold turkey. You know, I got to stop looking at that shit. I'm sorry. See this clean? This is what clean living does for you. 1030 at night, I'm fucking yawning. I'm ready to go to bed right now, get my fucking jam jams. And here and here I am supposed to be there for you. You guys are sitting there at work, the last fucking thing you need. You probably already had a donut. You're going to sick a uh, sugar crash here in a minute. And here I am yawning on, on you. Um, so... What else can I talk about here? Oh, yeah, clean living. If you're trying to have some clean living, do not watch the Lemmy documentary, which I just watched for the second time. Um, makes you want to have a couple of drinks because you're like, look how long that guy fucking lived. All the shit that he did, you know? Fucking yard it again. All right. 39 minutes in. I can do the last 21 minutes here without yawning. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Um, by the way, I don't, for, uh, people out there, uh, you know, I mentioned some of the helicopter shit I did. I, did I tell you, I finally did that, that solo flight that I wanted to do from Long Beach. And I, I went through the Bravo airspace with the planes taken off over you, you know, at LAX came right around, looked at the house, flew over the fucking house that they, uh, the horses had from Godfather right down sunset over to El Monte and then back to, um, Oh, I did tell you that because that's when I saw the old guy fall off the fucking scooter. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I for, didn't think that I told you that one. I was just thinking about that shit the other day. Of course, my fucking headphones go out. What the, what the fucking – I knew it. I fucking knew it. I knew that was going to happen. Um, so anyways, I was at the uh, comedy store on Saturday night, and I was trying out this uh, this new chunk that I've been fucking with for the last couple of months, and I uh, finally got it down. I said it. As perfect as I could say it. Of course, I didn't. I didn't fucking. Uh, I didn't tape. Of course, I didn't tape. Why would I tape? That would have been the smart thing to do. But whatever. I said it, so I'll get it. I'll get it back. And um, I felt fucking great about it. And then today, I got text messages from two different comedians telling me that they loved the new shit that I was doing. I just, I just made my fucking day. So I'm really excited about uh, getting that shit together because I want to do another special this year. And um, I got some stuff in my act that's funny, but I just feel like the topics have been done before. So I'm going to try to like, you know, you know, push that shit to the wayside. Maybe that'll just be on the, the some of those topics will just be on like the, uh, when I release the vinyl of the Madison Square Garden show, I'll just keep them on that one. There'll be some extra jokes. So it won't be the same material. I don't know. I'm just excited about the uh, the next few months how that shit's going to turn out. But uh, before I get into the questions this week, everybody, I have to give a shout out to Rogue Fitness. 
who evidently was listening to the podcast. I was breaking their balls. You know, I'm, I'm making a gym. I'm paying somebody to build a gym for me out in my garage, a little gym there in the back. And I got all my shit through Rogue Fitness. They just had the best shit out there. And I was just joking with them that, uh, you know, how dare you not send me free shit? I didn't even ask him for it. He just immediately came on the podcast, breaking their fucking balls. And they listened to the one where there was me and Nia. Nia told me to get the regular looking weights, just the ones that look like iron or whatever. And I wanted the uh, I wanted the colorful ones, and she thought that they were corny. So all of a sudden, I just got this shipment of these colorful weights. And I was laughing, going, oh, man, I must have fucked it up. I got the colorful ones. So I wrote them trying to ask how to send it back. And they said, no, we listened to the podcast. And they sent me some free weight, and they sent me a T-shirt. So, I, you know, Rogue Fitness, I was fucking around. You didn't have to do that. You guys are solid, man. And I'm, I can't wait to, uh, you know. Use your, your equipment because it's, you know, it's great. Made in the USA, all good stuff. Oh, look who's here. The busy body. The lovely Nia. Did you get some Thai food? Yes. Did you? Grab a mic. Or do you want to eat? Do you want to eat? I got another uh, 17 minutes here. <laughs> 17 minutes. The mics are in the closet. Oh, why don't you, why don't you sit down and help me through with the questions? Why don't I hook it up? Because I am, I am, uh, I'm actively doing the podcast right now. Actively. Huh? Oh Jesus! You know, if you're gonna be in a mood like that. Oh Jesus! What's that? He just walked out on me. Um. Anyways, all right. Well, I'm gonna start reading the first one then. Okay. You don't care. All right. Oh, by the way, you know something? I was taking my dog out for a walk today. You know, we were walking up into the park there. And this is before she puked and I decided to turn around and come home. She started nowhere. She started yakking. Uh, made me feel bad. I was like, Jesus, I hope it wasn't something I did. It wasn't hot out or anything. Um, another Theo has a very sensitive stomach. Well, another fucking group of people come up. The second they get into the into the park, they just fucking don't say what park. They go into the fucking park and they fucking take the leashes off. And the fucking dogs come yeah. right up to my dog. And they're like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. She's friendly, she's friendly. It's like my dog isn't. My dog, my dog is well, ignores learn. other dogs. It chills, learn. and then like when you are bugging my dog, it doesn't go. It never has the. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you knock it off? It immediately just grabs you. Like, remember Friday the 13th when Jason was under the cot and grabbed that dude's head and reached up? I guess it was the chick in the first I met one. A, I met a dog tonight who just didn't like anybody. and I. But I realized quickly what it was. His owner was holding him. And anytime anyone came towards the owner, like, oh, hey, oh, what a cute dog. The dog would start growling. And, I, and it's so funny because he said to one of the people, oh, pet him. And I'm like, no, your dog isn't doesn't want to be pet. It growls at everybody. Right. And I think the dog was protecting the owner. So anytime, you know, like I said, anyone came towards him, he started growling. But right. he was so clueless that he was like, oh, is he, he's fine. Just pet him. And I'm like, no, no you can't yeah, pet well, the dog if it's growling at people. I the can't dog, judge him. Our dog's a psycho. The dog went to bite me. Like it actually kind of like put its 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 it teeth around my you, finger. Like it walked across the fucking room. No, I went over and, and, it, over there and it, that it put its its put my finger in between its teeth and didn't chomp down. Little but it dog. Was, it was a bite. Yes, but it was a biting. Little uh, dogs are the worst behavior. So basically, little dogs, that man. If little dogs were people, they'd be riding around in convertibles. You know, like a Corvette or some shit. All right, All right let's I let's, have, let's I have read to leave thing. in eleven minutes. All right, so can you want to do one one question here? Yeah, let's All do right. it. All right. Job. Hey, Billy Burray. Um, I wor- I'm working part-time job and I have a problem. Let me see if there's a relationship one here. Why can't... Oh, boyfriend. I'm sorry. Can I not be involved in the, the job one? Well, I just feel like I always give the guy advice. Well, maybe it's time to shake it up a little bit. That's what I was trying to do. Have you okay. give some lady advice on some relationship? Huh? Oh, God. Are you going to go on a feminist rant here? You know, women can answer other fucking questions too, you know? Yeah. All right. Ask another question that doesn't have to do with relationships. Hey, you know, I'm trying to give you a nice softball here. I'm trying to lob it over the you fucking plate. You don't need place. to fucking softball anything to oh, me, first Jesus. of all. Oh, Jesus. Rolling your head. Here we go. <laughs> you went all reality show on me there. All right. I'm working a part-time job, and I have a problem related to it. All right. The job is I work at a fucking ice cream parlor. 
<laughs> it's at an ice cream place in my town. And the second time I worked there a while back, I had a god-awful shift. I didn't have all the kinks of the job worked yet, and I was working with someone I didn't know, which made me more nervous. The night quickly became a, you know this word, Kafka-esque parade. Yeah. Who's, Kafka-esque. Who's, who's that? Oh! No, he's a writer. Is he a philosopher? I, I'm Did he get, have a particular political view? I think he died in a boating accident, was whatever it was. he a communist? Kafka-esque. Joseph Kafka. I think he's uh, one of those he's like dance a instructors for J-Lo. No. <laughs> Before she goes on tour? I'm not going to lie and say no exactly seven, who... Can we Google it, though? I really feel like it's Joseph Kafka. Can we just read the fucking question? Okay. All right. The night quickly became a Kafka-esque parade of uh, horrific errors. I screwed up orders, stocked things wrong, etc. And by the end of the night, my coworker was audibly and visibly disgusted with me, and she should have been. She's Franz a- Kafka. Okay. Sorry. German language writer of novels and short stories. Who is, oh my God, he died the day after my birthday. And therein lies the tragedy. (laughs) All right, here we go. Fuck you. All right, put down your phone. Let me me finish. I'm trying to learn what. I was going to say surreal. I was right, yes. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is not entertaining. Sorry. This isn't entertaining for people. Kafka esque elements often appear in existential works, but the term has tra- transcended the literary realm to apply to real life occurrences in situations that are incomprehensibly complex, bizarre, or illogical. There we go. Franz Kafka. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So the ladies, uh, the lady is is was upset with him, and he's saying, you know, audibly and visibly disgusted with me, and she should have been. Okay. She's in college. And I'm in high school, so luckily I never had to work with her again after the summer was over, and she went back to her classes. But even as recently as spring break, I've heard she's still talking shit about me. <laughs> you heard this? All the way back. She's at some college. And yeah, she, how did you hear that? Yeah, they're all on the Facebook. Um <laughs> Oh, Grampy. I love saying the... The, the face. Huh? You guys taking the Molly? <laughs> the, 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 no, you wouldn't You wouldn't know Molly if you were the Grampy. You'd be like... The Molly? The, the ecstasy. Whatever. It's just an old guy the thing. The ex. Yeah. That was my dad when he used to get mad at my sister. Christ, is she on that internet? Is she on that internet? Um, it's almost summer again, and I'm almost definitely going to have to face her if I work regularly. If I do, I know for a fact I'll fuck things up immediately purely from anxiety. Mm. Dude, you should be like the fucking older, wiser guy crushing it, and then you fucking bang her. Confidence, my friend. Wait, what? What do you mean, banger? It's all there. Why do you... What, what is it's that? It's all there. You Why can you make her a mall. She it? get two straws. You know what? Because she's the older woman. Right, and she has to be tamed by getting that dick. Is that what it is? No, I didn't say that. You yeah, sexist. you basically did. No, you were I'm like, go, go in there with the confidence, and then you bang her. Yeah. Because your life is like a fucking movie from the 1920s, Bill, where the guy is slapping the woman around. It's like, get it together, see? And she's hysterical. No, no. He oh, completely Postmates fucked here. up. Postmates he compl- This is like one of those coming-of-age movies where in the begin- beginning, the nerd's like, you'll walk away from me. The nerd is looking at the cheerleader, and she's dating the impossible dick with the blonde, wavy hair, right? And somebody does a fucking triple Lindy. Jesus Christ, that went sideways, huh? The fuck just happened there? Listen, because I'm not going to be able to get a word in. In defense of what I was saying, right, he makes an ass out of himself in front of this, you know, this older fucking broad, right? <laughs> See, this isn't sexist. Now you come back, you're a little older, a little wiser, right? You're a year older, you're still growing, you're filled out a little bit, right? All of a sudden, you're crushing it. You're making a fucking couple banana splits and a smoothie all at the same time. And she's just like, wow, this isn't the man that I left the year, you know, the year before. All of a sudden, you guys are working closely. You know, ice cream's always romantic. What kind of fucked up advice are you giving? I'm not giving anything advice. <laughs> I'm telling this kid to fucking shake it off. He goes, if I don't work often, I could lose my job as we've got more employees than we need. And I really have a great setup. Now that I've learned it, the work is easy. I basically pick my own hours and my boss is 
by far the sweetest racist homophobe I've ever met in my life. Any ideas besides the obvious murder? He said, your stand up is killer. I hope I can see you perform sometime. Yeah, dude, you gotta, you gotta grow a dick here, man. You're the fucking man. You've been there for a year. You know what's going on. Just be like, uh, I don't know. Just, I don't know. What do you, is this, is this, do you have a crush on this woman? If she's not going to fuck you, then what do you care what she thinks? Is that bad, Neil? Yes. <laughs> what does fucking have to do with it? Just have confidence in yourself and do the job. Also, this is this is a high school person that's writing in. This is somebody who's making ice cream cones and he's scared out of his mind about some woman who's not, he's, he's not even fucking. He doesn't want to ask her out. What is the problem? She's going to yell at you about the way you put the fucking cherries yeah, on something? Yeah, because it's a job and he's in, you know, worried about how he's going to be perceived. You oh, remember what it was sensitive. like to be at that age where you know every little thing you know means disaster in the bigger picture. Oh, so is he? This ca- is just a job. Is, is he this catastrophizing? A, a little bit, yeah. I think you're worried a little too much about nothing. Just do your job, do your thing. Don't even worry about it. And there's plenty of other jobs out there, by the way. He should just be totally cocky when she comes in. What up, bitch? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that'll go over huh? real well. <laughs> Go be a float. float. That's how mm-hmm. I do. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Kiss with a little peace sign. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, honey. Yeah, no. ice cream hat to the side. Mm-mm. All right. Weed, pussy, or nothing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Pushing all the chips in. This is the World Series of Poker. <laughs> All right. Hey there, Billy Boy. I'm, I'm a new listener to your podcast, but a longtime fan of your stand-up. I was wondering if you could help me out with the, a dilemma I'm facing. So my weed dealer put the moves on me my last time I was at her place. Uh, nothing came of it, but I could tell she was trying to get me to fuck her. Until now, I thought it was weird that she began to sell me pot for practically nothing. <laughs> wow. She's cool, and I've hung out with her oh. at her place many times to just smoke weed. Oh. Just just as well, I'm single, so I have no problem getting some strange pussy that falls into my lap. The problem <laughs> is that she's a very heavy broad and completely unattractive. Oh, Jesus. But she sells the best weed in the area. Dude, this is fucking, this has all the makings of the great first 10 pages of a script. We've established who the characters are. Oh, and now, yeah. Now I'm we've sure got the story the problem. will go super far with this premise. Oh, God. You, you know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what that. I love? You know I what I love? I wanted to do that. I'm you know sorry. that guys. I couldn't help it. You know that guys it. just want to fuck you. <laughs> Women know that. You use it to your advantage to get shit. And then when we admit that that's what we want to do, you're like, duh, that was Oh my god, I really wish someone would tell the story about a guy who's getting thrown pussy left and right and doesn't know what to do with it. And it's like a coming of age, and I'm sure he's also fighting with his friends a little bit about, like, what dorm are we going to stay in in college? This is hilarious. He's got this heavy broad that he's not attracted to who's his fucking weed dealer. Yeah. She's got the best weed. He knows she wants to fuck him. What what was the rest of the story? Does he want to? Yeah, this is a fucking, come on, Seth Rogen would crush this. Oh, you are in it. You know what? You're hungry. You're like him on that Snickers commercial. No, I don't even no, know who I'm you sure are. I'm right sure Seth Rogen would write a phenomenal transcendent script that Jonah Hill would act out and it would just be like, wow, is this what it's like? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I like all of those people and I like those movies. You don't like Hot Tub what Time Machine? What is it like to be chubby and awkward and not know what to do with your life? Oh, why are, you, why are you being a jerk? I don't know. You're being I'm a jerk. Sorry. Yeah, you're hungry. I'm being a little bit of a jerk. Apologize to I'm Seth also, Rogen. I'm also Jonah a little... Hill. I'm a little... I'm a little... Whatever. Okay. okay. Yeah, you are. You're a little out of sorts here. Okay. All right. You're, you're burning bridges in this town, sweetie. Let me tell you something. Those bridges <laughs> don't come back. What's the rest of the story? So uh, but she sells the best weed in the area. I don't want... Right, I don't want to not fuck her and then have her cut me off. But at the okay. same time, I feel that I... If I do fuck her, then I'm no better than an addicted crack whore doing a line off some fat guy's dick. Maybe. Uh, so guess what? When it comes down to it, do I fuck my ugly drug dealer for good oh, cheap weed? Oh my god! Or do I just questions. or do I just find a new dealer with super herb and pay more money? Thanks. Hope all is well with you, ginger fuck. Because <laughs> you're ginger <laughs> fuck. Um. 
Have you ever heard the expression, don't shit where you eat? Yeah. Don't I, fuck your weed dealer. Yeah, don't just don't fuck her. This is a business relationship. Keep it business. Should he, like, lie and start talking about how he has a girlfriend? No, just buy weed from her and, like, just let it be business. Yeah, stop smoking with her. And also, like, I, I, I mean, maybe she's desperate for your cock, but maybe you're, like, reading into it. She might be trying to fuck you and the next dude. You so know? she's, she's giving a drug you, dealer. So she's, she's a drug dealer. She's hustling. She's hustling for like customers. She's hustling for dick. Like, don't get excited. You know, well, you're not the minute. only one, bruh. So you think? <laughs> yeah, but she's giving it away for next to nothing. If she does that, she's not going to make any money. True. She's making it in other ways. I don't know. I feel like. Just don't fuck your weed dealer. That just sounds like a disaster written all over it. Or get yourself a really good connect now. Have that in your back pocket. So if you do decide, to, the only reason why you would fuck your weed dealer is if you actually want to fuck her. Not because you're so desperate for the best weed ever. Have you really had the best weed in like your entire city? Probably not. So calm down. Don't He's got her. a dealer. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, you're kind of into the habit. You're not just going, hey, can I get a hit off that? When you're fucking going there week after week to the point that the, your Weed de- dealers are a dime a dozen, though. There's, it's not like it's yeah, a specialty. But I'm just saying, this fucking chick, is de- he's, he's buying so much weed off him, she's developing feelings for him. She's not. He might be cute. Jesus. And somebody, she might have a little Jesus. crush, but, like, it's not that se- It's My point is it's not that serious. Don't fuck your weed dealer unless you want to have a problem with your weed dealer. And you don't want to have a problem that, that with that a drug dealer. That trust me. Weed dealer wants to fuck one of her customers. Of course. I completely believe it. I'm just saying just don't don't go there. It's not worth it. That's my bottom line. She's usually not this grumpy, you guys. All I'm right. not grumpy. Old boyfriend texts wife. <laughs> oh, Billy Cheeseballs. Where'd that come from? I don't know. I just fucking make up names for me. Oh, okay. All right. Very happily married for 25 years to the hottest wife and mother of our three sons. She's oh, in spectacular shape and beautiful. While on vacation in Palm it's Springs. Most important thing, right? Just keep yourself in shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're visual animals. We're visual animals. I know. There's a reason why all those gay guys are walking around with six packs because they know what they're trying to attract. <laughs> Yeah. Don't bring the gays into this. Do you think all those gay guys want to go to the gym that much? They have to. <laughs> if they don't, that's the end of the dick train, and they know it. They know it. Oh, they know it. All right. <laughs> so anyways, uh, while on vacation in Palm Springs, I caught a glimpse of her phone screen and saw a text from PB. PB was asking, how's the weather? So I asked her who PB is. After a little persuasion, she replied, it's Dave. Dave is a boyfriend from her high school years, and he is a former fiancé. This is awful. She promised it was nothing. I asked if they had Why seen each have other. him underneath a different name, though? Yeah. That's pretty suspect. When you have the person's name saved under a, an alias. PB. What does PB mean? Wait, is that penis? More? Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant penis. She's dyslexic. <laughs> penis, oh, babe. Penis, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Pussy banger. Maybe. <laughs> I'm sure it's something between the two. It was a them. capital P and then a lowercase b. I don't know why you did it. I don't know. If you guys have any suggestions what PB would oh, stand my God. for. Uh, come on, it's fun. What's gonna come it's what Twitter social now. media is all about. Jesus. He goes, uh, she <laughs> promised it was nothing. I asked if, if they had seen each other or slept together. She said no. I believe her. Okay. Oh, Jesus. It's a former fiancé. Does he mean now? I guess now. Or maybe I just want to believe her. She's otherwise a very honest person. Well, I sent Dave a text, and here's what I said. Oh, beautiful. I'm only going to say this once. You're nothing but a sleazy cocksucker. You've crossed the line of decency. Go fuck yourself, or better yet, go choke to death on some poor mm, somebody's dick. Wait, what? It's a, it's a homophobic. He was upset. Okay. You know? 
Never communicate with my wife, capital letters, ever. Mm -hmm. If you pursue her in any way, I'll cut your dick off with a rusty saw blade and shove it down your throat. I hope you're getting the message here. His reply, understood, this is the last text, name and number deleted. My question to you is, was I harsh enough with Dave? <laughs> and I'm not sure what to do with about my wife. She deleted him from her contacts and she said she has no need to ever communicate with him again. What are well, your thoughts? Well, I think you need to let it be then. I mean, I that was I have to say that was masterful that text that he sent to PB aka Dave. I think he got the message with that one. Now, what do you think? Uh, so, do you think she banged him? No, she's probably sending flirting, borderline inappropriate text messages. I bet you're still as beautiful as the day I took you to prom. Oh, he like that type of shit. Why are you? I why probably you went a little like further that? than that. I don't fucking know. I he, he said because that, if it were you, Bill Burr. You probably would have said some, like, that's why you're making that face right now. Because you know how you are. You probably would have said some inappropriate shit over text. I mean, that's what yeah. texting is. <laughs> is that what texting is? It is. It's, it's, what is, how do, how, how do I, how do I Please get to this? explain texting to us, Bill Burr. <laughs> Please explain how texting works. All right. Advice from a, for a fellow ginger. Oh, moving right moving along. Moving right along. I'm moving right along. Mm-hmm. A fellow ginger exactly. from Finland here. I have a decision to make and would appreciate some advice from a wise and experienced man like you. Mm. Ever since I was a kid, oh, you've just, every fucking thing. Ever since I was a kid, I've wanted to be an airline pilot. I'm 19 years old and I'm graduating from high school in December. Yes, here we finish high school later. I was just going to say, is that when they graduate from high school in Finland? Yeah, later than you guys in America. All right, I've I have till the end of the year to decide what I want to study. I've always had a plan after high school. I would want to uh, go to a flight academy and become a pilot, but now I've started to question if that's what I really want to do for a living. Living, I mean, an airline pilot is an incredible job. I absolutely love flying, and we get to travel a bunch and see all kinds of amazing places, etc. Plus, I would get to the sun every day without burning my. Nordic ultra pasty pasty skin. Um, the captain makes six figures, which is plenty enough for me since I'm not into money. My only problem with being a pilot is that I would never be completely free, meaning that for the rest of my life, working for some other douchebag uh, would would decide for me when I can come to work and where I can fly. The idea of being tied up to a company and having some cunt making all the decisions for me scares the shit out of me when i'm older i want to be able to do things on an impulse without asking permission from uh some capital letters other man also pilots you're just over there taking pictures of shit near um I'm listening. also pilots spend a lot of time away from home and someday when i start a family and have kids i want to spend as much time as possible with them so that could be a problem as well flying planes for a living would be a dream job but it would get in the way of my other dream of being completely my own man and free what do you think should i go study something else no what you should do is still be into the aviation thing you just figure out a way to do what you want to do within aviation okay i will equate it to the job that i have I am a stand-up comedian, which opens up all these doors into the entertainment world, which a lot of them you think you want to run through until you get to the other side, and then you realize what you're talking about is like, holy fuck, I thought I had the world by the balls if I got this. I thought I would be the pimp, and then you realize that you're actually the whore. So you have to – what I would do if I was you is I would um, still go to flight school. I would learn how to fly. And then what I would do is rather than going flying for some commercial airline, there's got to be some other cool shit that you can do like flying for sightseeing tours. You're not into money, right? Maybe you do that. Maybe you end up having that business and other people fly for you and you get to fly around. Um, What other jobs are they? There's fighting forest fires. You know, you do that like helicopters and planes and that type of shit. Sure. Yeah. Um, Listen. Just by being a pilot, 
already you, you got some sort of renegade spirit in you. So I'm sure there's plenty of fucking jobs that you can get in aviation. I think in pretty much any job, there's there's a way to be in the matrix and then there's a way to be outside. Like, you know, he's a renegade, that one. You know, don't get tied down with that guy. You You can definitely do it. Right? What do you think? Yes. Yeah, so he should still be a pilot. Dude, you love to fly. It's what you want to do. Um, but, you know, there's, there's all kinds of shit. You could fly for a fucking airline, make your money, and then leave, and then go f- do something else, like start your own business. I don't know. You're laughing at me right now. There's a, no, there's, no, there's, no. He's yeah, 19. Yeah, yeah. He's no, got the whole no, world. No, he's got, no. he's got the world by the fucking short hairs. It, it, all sounds, it all sounds good. I was listening to a podcast from a while back. Then you were shitting on the NFL, having games in London. He said those games are huge things for us European football fans. And believe it or not, there are tons of football fans here in Europe. Uh, the games always sell out. Oh, NFL football sells out out there. Who knows? All right, here's new. Who, who's, here's the last one. I'm stuttering here. Um, okay, the last question that I actually did with the lovely Nia, and now we're fucking wage gap myth. Um, oh, did this spark a debate? Uh, dear, dear Billy Baru, I was one of the fortunate audience members of your epic terrorist performance. You crushed it, in my opinion. Thank you very much. He said the wage gap statistic. Um, he said, I wanted to bunk a myth for you. The wage gap statistic. You know, there's this thing right now that they say that a woman gets paid Less, 79 cents less to do the exact same job is a guy, which, you know, my opinion is fucked up. The job should pay what it should pay, right? So this guy says the wage gap statistic that you hear about all the time is simply the average earnings of men and women working full time. It does not take into account different job positions, hours worked, or different jobs. It has nothing to do with the same work. It has nothing to do with discrimination. In 1963, the Supreme Court passed the Equal Pay Act, which makes it illegal to pay different wages for the same job. If you still don't buy that, then consider this. If a company could legally pay pay women less money, do you think those greedy cunts would ever hire a man? Some decent points there. Uh, Once I pulled this wage gap threat, Thread, a whole bunch of other feminist myths started to unravel, but I just wanted to shine a light on this topic. Well, okay, let's, you know, I'll have to look all of that up. I never looked up the Equal Pay Act, but um, if they're still able to make the numbers work, then wouldn't that say that guys get the better high-paying jobs? Then then does it become that? I'm just asking. All right? Um, That's what I would guess. So I don't know. Evidently, I have some reading to do, and I think a lot of feminists do too that just jump on the bandwagon. I'll look up the Equal Pay Act. Um, I don't know. Who the fuck knows? I mean, one of the dumbest fucking ways to get somebody to listen to your goddamn opinion is to just sit there and be like, you got it better than us. Your life is fucking easy. That immediately puts the other side going like, you know what? Ah, Fuck you. Fuck you and your brassiere, you know? My fucking life's easy. I just dealt with this, 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 and this. You know, it just puts people into that mindset. Um, I don't know. That whole fucking yelling and screaming and shit, you know, believe me, as a yeller and a screamer, I know it doesn't make people listen to you. It just makes you people just go, oh, my God, I want to get away from this person or that person's a fucking lunatic. That's been my experience trying to convey ideas <laughs> since I was a little orange-headed child. Um, I don't know what's going on. Okay. At the end of the day, people, sh- the, the job should pay what the job pays and the best person should get it. But sadly, that is never going to happen because there's always going to be the boss's son. There's always going to be the hot chick. There's always going to be the racist, the homophobe, the person who comes in with the Southern accent and you're up North or vice versa. And somebody's mentally still fighting the war or think Southern people are stupid. You can't, the only way to take the human element out of it is to gradually, slowly but surely, dumb down human beings, make everything automated, and you slowly replace them with free-thinking robots, which is basically what's going to happen. By free-thinking, I mean they agree with the upper 1%, and not even the upper 1%, the upper 1% of the 1% that doesn't even show up, you know? There's a lot of, you remember all the blue blood money and everybody kind of knew how much money they had. And now they all say that, oh, they gave away a lot. You know, the Rockefellers are, you know, their fortune isn't what it's worth. It used to be the Vanderbilts. They're only worth like $75 million now. I mean, that's, I don't know. There's all these stories out there that there's families that are so fucking big and powerful. They're above any sort of borders. 
and they fucking you know when they travel by yacht it's only like it's like their little navy and they just it's i love conspiracy theory and they just float around they pull up to the dock and the com- countries just come out and give them bags of gold and then they just disappear it's like water world except you know without the uh you know i don't know except they still have all the amenities because the world hasn't flooded over yet does that make any sense you know, I think that's as good a spot to stop as any. <laughs> uh, my apologies for uh, fucking up the podcast this week. Um, you guys have a nice couple of fucking days. And um, can I end on some more drum nerd shit? I told you my uh, drum teacher's taking me through um, that Sting album, Ten Summers Tales or whatever, that has the great Vinnie Caliuta on it and how... They played in all these odd times, but they wanted to imply 4-4 four, four time. And he finally taught me on that seven days, which is in five, which I love. Uh, he finally wrote out what he was doing on the hi-hat, which is basically he's playing that. It's four, four against five. He's playing five underneath, but he's implying four in the hi-hat. And uh, after all these fucking years of trying to figure out how to do it, he finally he just wrote out one line of it, and now it makes sense um, to me. And it's basically on the hi-hat. I just still count in five, but you just count, you know, underneath, you, if, if, you, if you listen to it, you count one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, boom, one, that fucking shit. But on top, how it works for me is you just, you just, I still count in five. I just, you're throwing in, you count it as like eighth notes, so one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five. And the first time through, you accent one, three, and five, and the second time through, you accent two and four. Try that. That's the way I've been doing it. Now, granted, this is massively filtered down <laughs> from a professional drummer to a stand-up comedian who cannot read out loud. Um, all right. That's it. Go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you on Thursday. I'll check in on you. All right.